third McAllister, which has 250 units, about 280 kids, uh, students, and to do a seismic upgrade on that building. Now, all told, this is going to create up to 1,120 uh, new or rehab units of student housing. We don't have 1,120 students, but we do have a library, we have the dining commons, we have a lot of infrastructure. So we're partnering with UCSF to create a, a graduate student village you know, right on McAllister Street, right on the Golden Gate Avenue. So with UCSF, we would co-mingle the population, jointly develop student housing. The UCSF students have access to our law library, dining commons, all the food service, all the amenities, the athletic facilities. And we would kind of have a, a, a true graduate urban campus with uh, you know, professional school students, the same uh, demographics, you know, everybody's over 21. They have similar uh, characteristics. Um, so it's a really exciting project. And what makes it so interesting is where we're located, this new stretch in you know, Civic Center Tenderloin, is literally smack dab in the middle of the various UCSS, UCSF sites. Parnassus, uh, Parnassus Heights, Mission Bay, UCSF operates Mount Zion, and they also operate San Francisco General Hospital. So we are currently on their shuttle line that they'll, they'll stop, but when we get this project done, they'll be you know, transporting their students, UCSF students, to various locations around the city. You know, no transportation impacts, it will really help small businesses in the community. These are, these are graduate students, you know, probably not unlike undergrads, you don't have a lot of disposable income. You're not gonna go to a Boulevard restaurant on Mission and Second, or, or a Street Grill, you're probably gonna go to a you know, Vietnamese sandwich shop. So, um, and activate, activate the neighborhood and you know, support small businesses. So I think it's a win-win. Um, we're very deep in the EIR process and I'll be glad to take any questions. Yes, Susan. Yeah, uh, okay, you know the, the lawsuit, with the Academy of Art, will you yeah. be taking in any Academy of Art orphans? Uh, well, they, they don't, you know, I think we're gonna be pretty well filled up. <laughs> yeah. uh, we are talking to San Francisco State in terms of their graduate programs, uh, because you know you guys have a real housing challenge. I, mean, I, I understand you guys have housing in the East Bay. I commute from the East Bay every day. For it's the San Francisco State. Yeah, that has to be brutal. Uh, it's about a two-hour commute one way. Yeah, and that, you know that detracts from your educational experience. You got to worry about hiring, schlepping back and forth, the cost of transportation. Mm -hmm. So uh, the short answer is we're really looking at uh, you know, public higher ed, but you know if, if we had the capacity, we probably would. But I think I think the institutions have a responsibility to house their students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, students are kind of destabilizing the rental markets because you know, they come and go, they, they displace, they compete. You, know, you guys, you guys compete for housing just like everybody else in this community, mm -hmm. and so I think that the institutions can house more of their own students, that it helps minimize some of the negatives of student you know, residences. You expect, you expect uh, in terms of uh, parking and... Uh, well, we have a parking garage already. Isn't that going to be enough for all that many students? There's going to be fine. Because, you know, students, you know, we, we have a parking garage. It's 400 stalls. Um, we're not programming any additional parking. In these, okay. in these facilities. So you'll find a way for them to get a bicycle. Well, then nowadays there's, there's, there's you know, car share, ride share, yeah. you know, uh, rides on demand. So I think I think the parking will be fine. Well, where do you have the current parking? Where is it? Uh, right here in the corner of Golden Gate and Larkin. Oh, where, the the Phil's Co where the Phil's Coffee is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right above Phil's. And this one, the 333 Golden Gate, is the, that block in the middle of the block? very pretty vacant lot. I, I should not even think. It's, it's a demonstration garden. Yeah. There's basketball. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. Is this, this one, the flooring one, is a dormitory for students? Right? Yeah, right now. Are you going to remodel it? We're going to remodel the interiors. We're not going to mess with the exterior. Are you going to have more units? Maybe yes. a little more. Well, maybe 50. That's good. That's good. Yeah, because again, it's um, what makes the housing affordable. We don't get any subsidies. We don't get affordable housing subsidies. 
what makes the housing affordable for students is you know, small square footage. You know, we're talking 275 square feet. You know, it's micro units. Yeah. But you're not going to live in for very long. It's only oh. a few years. You know? Plus, there's thousands of people in the neighborhood living in. Yes, in the same thing. That size or small. Absolutely. Room or room. And so, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a good project. I really do. It's not going to be without, you know, bumps in the road. But uh, we're, we'll, we'll get it done. So it's going to be only this new building, right? Not well, there'll be a new building. Price. There'll be a new building here. Yeah. This building will be about 130 feet, 140 feet. Okay. So this building, the existing, three, yeah, exists. this is 300 feet. This is state building about 280, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the new um, academic building will be about 90 feet. Mm -hmm. So we've done you know, the, the wind analysis and some wind issues, but we'll take care of it. Yes. Um, in your draft JR and your geotechnical work, um, it talks about the compaction. That's something that's very important to people who live in areas where the ground can turn into liquid mud and everything, do weird things. Um, next, next month in June, we're actually having people from the sea level rise action plan come and talk about sea level rise and potential groundwater rise over the next 1,500 years. And I'm curious, um, based upon information here, that um, are you going to plan a redundancy into your project for planning uh, the groundwater right because you're actually not too far above sea level? Um, well, that's a good question. We, when you build to the current building code, you <coughs> put structural seismic uh, soil, or soil testing soil consolidation. Yeah, I'm not sure. This, this is a big deal. It's called, um, you know, I think people are starting to recognize that there truly is global warming. So now we're going into the sort of adaptation stage. And we're going to have to adapt as a society to higher sea levels, higher water tables. And, you know, that's going to occur over the next 30, 20, 30, 50 years. So that is something to keep in mind. But I can't say that we're really doing anything different because of global warming other than really striving for a lead certification. We're going to strive for lead certification. It's really expensive. We're going to, you know, we're going to do our best to get the lead certification. We're going to have a, a lot of open space and then the roof, that rooftops. We're going to shift uh, the demonstration gardens to the roof and uh, you know, really maximize mm -hmm. that rooftop space. Because, yeah, space is really precious. And so we'll be losing some open space in front of 198. We need to replace that someplace else. But, um, and the environmental the new process is very uh, I admire your stamina for reading this. Well, I, I have a... I'm oh, sorry, you're, you're, you're the environmental student. I, I actually uh, have been fond of what's underneath us since I was a kid. I went to some charts in geology college. Uh, I'm just fascinated by what we're sitting on, how we would shift in an earthquake, um, how we would fundamentally survive if the uh, under part under sea part of our building our building society turned into zoo. Well yeah, yeah, we've uh, been doing a lot of um, outreach. One of the major uh, just the, like eye opening it was just a wonderful thing. We met with the community group and, and they what they were really concerned about was post disaster recovery. You know, it's like that makes a lot of sense. You know, about how UC Hastings could collaborate with the neighbors so in, in, the, in the immediate aftermath of, of an earthquake that will happen, yeah. it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah, that, that we have like a mutual assistance protocol where we can have supplies stored. And again, I'm going to have about up to 1,100 units of housing. I'm going to have a lot of students on campus. These students come from all over the state, all over the country. They're going to have no place to go after an earthquake. So we just got to figure out ways to sort of mutually help each other out. And you know, write it out. So that's a big purchase you know, supplies. When you're building a new building of a pretty good scale, you have you have choices of doing you know, thoughtfully, you know, things you wouldn't think of doing, you know, with a re remodel. It's right from scratch. So you need, we need to think this stuff through and recognize that you know bad things are gonna happen with climate change, uh, natural disasters, and we have to be prepared for that. 
Have you thought about um, having uh, floor captains on your floors with your tenants who are nerf trained? Uh, I can't say they're really nerf trained because that's the downside of student housing. We get a lot of churn in, in a permanent residential facility. We get much more stability in terms of your, your floor wardens. But we do have floor wardens. The other thing is, um, on your one hundred McAllister, the Methodist Church is sitting there vacant. Vacant? Alley. Has been vacant for, gosh, 40 years? Oh, well, I think probably longer than that. And um, what, are you, what are your basic plans if you have anything to do with that? Because I thought it was a great well, idea for you to build anything else. Because turning the um, main sanctuary into an auditorium where you can host small plays, small uh, concerts, and events for the community, as well as to fundraisers for the students. Well, we, we went, we've been looked at that. We've been talking to the theater companies for like years and years. The price tag is too big. This, this space that we're talking about is called the Great Hall. It's an old cathedral on um, Calister Street. This is the Methodist, it's a, I guess the Methodist call it space. <coughs> but, um, has 70 foot ceiling heights. And so see, 70 feet, that's a, that's a hell of a ceiling height. But it has a lot of problems and challenges in the investments. So I think probably what we're gonna end up doing if we can pull this off is basically have mezzanine and have three or four levels where you have 20 foot ceiling heights and, and do that same type of you know, community space, meeting room, conference center. So it's a pretty unique space, but it really is required for the, the pretty major. Well, guys, any other questions? Just one question. Yeah. yeah. What is the increase in terms of employees that you expect to have with all of this new development? So now, now you may have how many employees you have coming to this well, campus right now? For one, five hundred. Well, you know, excluding uh, faculty, we we'll put the faculty off the table. I would say about hundred and seventy-five, roughly. And I think in terms of employment opportunities, we are going to be looking at additional um, you know, service workers. We have um, custodial, we have building engineers, and you know, I would like, to, you know, I'm working with Code Tenderloin and um, Market for the Masses to see whether, you know, I can get authority from my board to work on employment preferences. Because again, I mean, this thing is true. Why wouldn't Hastings want to hire locally? Because in an earthquake, you know, someone who's living in you know, way out there is not going to be able to get, get, to, get to the city. So uh, it's a problem that the police department has and all these other people have. Yeah. I think we need to sort of, you know, think that through, how we can benefit the neighborhood at the same time as, you know, benefiting ourselves. Those are the best relationships where yeah. you know, both people win. Okay, so Gerald, so um, I, I noticed you made a couple of uh, Not really. 
No, private public can't do that. Well, we're, we're public, but we have, we're down under the regents. So you yeah. have the regents of the University of California, they run the Eastern system, they have President Napolitano. <laughs> uh, I have, the governor appoints a, a separate board of directors for Hastings. We're a public entity, but we're not, we're not integrated with UC, we're autonomous. And so, uh, for you. looking at, some days yes, some days no. Uh, but looking at our, our, our environment, looking at the, the, the day, the era we live in, uh, it was just, we're studying going into a, a relationship with the University of California, San Francisco, where they would provide the uh, police services for the entire campus. Uh, they have a two-tiered system with uh, security guards who are uh, AFSCME employees, coupled with um, sworn peace officers who are part of uh, fraternal brotherhood, uh, basically a UC statewide uh, peace officer. So we're, we're studying this. The board of directors has not made a decision. Uh, we're still in discussions with the organization representing our existing staff about you know, how we transition this. Um, but we do hope to be able to you know make an announcement this summer. Right. Are you going to be carrying hands? No. no. There was a, some time ago there was a controversy of whether they would shoot or they shouldn't. Uh, that was true. Do you have a position on that? Well, when you, when you have a sworn police officer, you have to have a full on police department. When you have a police department, you have to have your professional standards, the division, you have to have internal investigations. So it would come with that kind of a yeah. package. Yeah, it would come with that kind of a package. We, we're, we got 900 students, we can't support that. But we you know, we live in a community where there's there's some violence. And you know, you know Golden Gate Avenue is, is pretty messy right now. Golden Gate and Hyde is, is not uh, good. The yeah. post office is quite uh, uh, close now. Closed. It's closed, but it's become so you know, flags. So flags, <laughs> but it's become kind of a bank. I mean, it's, it attracts some negative stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. And they took over some a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, and then there's the, you know, schools and colleges tend to be high, uh, high incidence of uh, gun violence. You know, crazy people born in the best. And then you have all these young people who are very vulnerable. Yeah. Because they're, they're very kind of, they don't really know still the reality in which they live and they really. Well, and, and this is, you know, we're, we're the law school business, we're not in the police department business. Exactly. So you, you are, you have the other. Okay, so I think you answered her question. Uh, so I want to move on to our next part. Oh, okay. We'll be here for a few more minutes. No, I, I want you to do door prizes. I'll pick the door prizes. I want you to pick the door prizes. Oh, I get to pick the door prizes? Yeah, you get to pick the, the tickets oh, for the door prizes. Okay. Well, 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 do you want a ticket? Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, want a, I want a great door prize at your Christmas yeah, okay, party. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so uh -huh. start picking the numbers. Okay, here we go. We'll see, because you're all here. There's a proximity to the state building and the state police. Do you have a way of contracting with them to be back They actually, no, they're highway control. I should look at it. Okay, okay. Right. Three digits. Nine five nine. Nine five nine. They don't have a ticket in here. I think all your tickets are in there. I'll take nine five nine. Okay. Nine five nine. Marvis Phillips. We got a winner. Woo! All right. Okay. Open it up. Show what you got. You got the film, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just move on to the next one. Okay. Here says you're in there. More things than people in here. A nine five eight. Oh, oh, nine five eight. I got a ten dollar something. Nine five eight. That's me. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Woo. Elena, Elena looks at the winner. Come on, come, come on down. down. Show, show your pearlies on the camera. Mm -hmm. Pick one. Yeah. Elena's twenty. Elena. Yeah. 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 Nine five four. Nine five four. It's somebody in here. 